We just got to a car park at Ekomi Man Junction that has lots of vehicles going to Ikodobasi and other parts of Akwaibom State. And we discovered the fare to Ikodobasi is 1,200 naira only. We had to buy three so we have enough space to sit down. Yeah, we're heading to Ikodobasi right now. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Vera is your favorite traveler, yeah. And right now, the wind of adventure has blown me to Ikodabasi, local government area of Akwaibom State in Nigeria. And Ikodabasi is a place that really holds, um, I won't call it beautiful, it holds um, historical heritage of Nigeria. And most of the relics of the transatlantic slave trade in Africa back in the day is being hosted here. Here we have the um, slave bunker, we have the bridge of no return, where it is being said that when slaves got to that point, they were not allowed to turn back. We have the amalgamation house where Lord Frederick Lugard, if I'm correct, yes I'm correct, <laughs> where he signed the 1914 amalgamation of the Northern and Southern Protectorate. It holds a lot of history and I'm here today to see all these things, see what it looks like. I've heard so much about it. So um, yeah. I'm going to take you along with me wherever I go today. Um, I don't know where we're going to start with because um, it's going to be a lot, but then you're going to see everything with me. And I'm going to try as much as possible to explain all these things to you. That is if you've never heard them before. So come along with me on this journey. Let's do this together. And please don't forget to click on that subscribe button. Don't forget to click on the like button, like this video, give it a thumbs up share this video and let me know in the comments have you been to any of these places i have mentioned before did you know about ikoda basi local government area of akwaibom state before now if you did no problem let's just still go on this adventure together so i'll see you when we start our adventure We are at the Women War Memorial Museum in Ikodabasi and um, this place was raised in honor of the women who participated in the Abba Women Riot. I'm just going to go around and see what the place looks like and then I'm also going to tell you the story of how this place came about. That is if you haven't heard about it. So let's just go. and this is the colonial master yeah. obviously because i've seen the boots and the khaki right so uh yeah that's basically all we have here and we can't actually access inside or we went inside we haven't seen anyone around here to you know tell us more but i'm just going to try as much as possible to show you what i can show you here <music> gallery inside the museum and we could check it out now there's an entrance fee 500 naira for every other person but for school children it is 200 naira only 200 naira only and this 200 naira has to be paid by the children in their respective schools and um, the teachers collate the um, total sum pay it here and then they're being brought for excursion yeah but for adults you can just walk in here pay 500 naira and you'll be allowed access to the gallery and you're going to see names of the women who died during the riot and um, all other stuff that 
has to do with the history of um, Nigeria and Akwai Bom, Ikodabasi, the Eastern region, and all the beautiful stuff. So uh, whenever you are in Akwai Bom, you can come to Ikodabasi and then visit this place. This museum, constructed by Senator Helen Eswene, contains paintings and sculptures telling the story of the women's war in 1929 as well as the history of the people. If you didn't know about the women's war in 1929, popularly known as the Abba Women Riot, I'll definitely give you a quick summary. Let's head into the gallery to see what they have in here. Amongst the over 2,000 women who are said to have participated in the war, only families of a few of them were able to be traced and 58 names of women who lost their lives are written on this board to remember them. There are lots of stories regarding the war. Some say the war started in Abia state and many colonial offices destroyed there, hence the name Aba Women Riot. One of the major accounts is that the war started in the present day Ikodabasi. According to the accounts by the Ikodabasi people, it is said that the district officer had summoned about six women leaders to meet with him concerning women's complaints regarding tax payment. Unknown to him, since it was a problem which was going to affect all women, the women leaders had mobilized lots of women to join them in requesting for what they wanted. On arrival, the women asked that their letters be signed and stamped with an official stamp, also stating that women were not going to pay tax as the word of mouth by the district officer was insufficient to make the proclamation stick. The district officer got angry and upon sensing a looming protest, invited soldiers from Calabar and other places and others were also given to open fire on the women. About 500 women were said to have lost their lives instantly while others fled, drowning in the process and some others fought. The war spread to different parts and after women lost their lives, the colonial authorities then made a policy stating that women should not pay tax. In this gallery, you can also find photos of other historical places like the Point of No Return, the German Bridge, and Lord Lugard's house, which are all in Ikodabasi, and I'll be visiting these places today. Up next is the Amalgamation House. We're going to move from here to the Amalgamation House, um, where Sir Lord Frederick Lugard <laughs> yeah, had his office and where he signed the 1914 amalgamation of the Northern and Southern Protectorate. So I'll see you when we get there. This is the remains of Lord Lugard's office. Lord Lugard was the then governor of the Northern and Southern Protectorate. And this building is in a very sorry state right now, but it's still a great part of the Nigerian history. It is called the Amalgamation House because the 1914 amalgamation of the Northern and Southern Protectorates, which birthed the country Nigeria, was done here. Yes. Hi guys, right now I am inside Lord Lugard's office. Can you imagine? This is where he sat down to sign the 1914 amalgamation of the Northern and Southern Protectorate. Yeah. Um, I'm going to show you around this place the relics, the remains of what was his office. And um, yeah, I just sat down on his chair. So On January 1st, 1914, Lord Frederick Deltree Lugard, who was the governor of both the Northern Nigeria Protectorate and Colony and Protectorate of Southern Nigeria, signed a document joining the two, thereby creating the Colony and Protectorate of Nigeria. After the amalgamation, Flora Shaw, who later married Lord Lugard, recommended the name Nigeria, which is said to be derived from the river Niger, which empties into the Atlantic Ocean. After the recommendation, the name Nigeria was then imposed on the country. Let's go ahead and take a look at the relics.
you very much, ma. And this is to be Lord Frederick Day to Lugar personal office. You could see the gadgets used by Lord Frederick Day to Lugar. It's a Motorola product. You could also see the radio used by them. It's a Ferguson product. It's written in. This is also the stamp stand used by Lord Frederick Day to Lugar. We have a cash box. Alarm cash box. So this is where money was being put in. Yeah. If you try to open it without the key, he raises an alarm. Yes. Nice. This was typewriter case. Typewriter case. Okay. Yes. You also have very hand suits. This is usual hand suits. Okay. He hung his suits here. Yeah, with the hand suit by there. Okay. Then still the typewriter. Okay. Because I think you've been here. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Well, that is brief biography, and that is the, the lady that gave the name Nigeria. Laura Shaw. Laura Shaw. Yeah. Okay. Jonathan was a centenary president, Akwabi was a centenary governor, and Akitoto Fogodani was a centenary chairman. Okay. Yeah, because we might ask why, is there, why their portraits are here. Right here. Yes. Okay. 2014. When Nigeria was celebrating 100 years, he was the president. And Akwabe was the governor, and the father of the was the chairman. So they were celebrating during that time. Too. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why you see their portraits. So from here, we are going to head to his personal house where he lives in. Okay. Yeah, so um, we are already late. It's actually 6 p.m., and we are going to be heading to the slave bunker. So you can see um, what slaves uh, in the olden days went through. The places they put them before they were sold out and all that so i just want to, wanted to show you what the office looks like before we start heading out there so i'll see you guys just on the same street of the amalgamation house is this building which is said to be lord lugat's residence locals are living here now this building which is currently the ministry of lands and town planning in ikodabasi is said to have formerly been the district office of lord lugard and it's on the same street Right now, we're heading to the Bridge of No Return and the Slave Bunker. I might not really be able to film here because I heard there is a police station beside the bridge. We are about going into the Slave Bunker, which is said to have a capacity of 30 people, but 150 slaves were usually stored at a time and moved into waiting ships. Samuel is going in first, but I'll also go in to see what it looks like. I mean, I want to see where these people were usually kept. Connected to the scale here. Yeah. So, this 
So we wear the way they slips. Some of them wear the rock. And some wear dry jeans. Wow. So guys, this particular road here, this chain was usually connected there to weigh the slaves. That's why it was told. And the slaves were actually sold based on their weight. Some of the weights could, um, like the price could be a chicken. Some could be wrapper, some could be dry gin. Can you imagine what human beings were sold for? And this is the warehouse that the slaves were usually stored back in the day. A map was usually given to um, the slaves using this so that people identify which slave was theirs. And this is the place where it's said to have been put. They put the spear here and it gets hot and they use it to brand a particular slave, maybe write name or something to identify which one was whose slave and the rest of that. So that's basically it. I got to wear the chain and um, yeah. yeah. I'm heading down to Imo River. Yeah, I've heard of Imo River, but I've never been there. It turns out the boundary is in Ikorobasi still, so I'm heading there right now. Do you want to see it? I'll show you what it looks like. <laughs> River and I'm standing at the bank of Imo River. Obviously we can't go inside and we can't even go for a canoe ride but I just stopped by to see what it looks like because it is just beside the point of no return. Yes, if you've heard about it, this is it. Nami <laughs> Fesia. Before you. <laughs> but if you've seen it, I mean don't shade me, right? We are going to sum up our um, Ikorobasi tour here. Yep. Yes, so it got really dark and I couldn't film the um, outro for the Ikorabasi um, video. I mean, it was a lot. I think I'm going to do a separate video for places you should um, visit whenever you go to Ikorabasi in Akwai Bum State and the places you can visit in Akwai Bum State as a whole. I think that would be really awesome. Yeah, so thank you so much for following me on this journey. Thank you so much for going with me on this journey. Please don't forget to click on the subscribe button. Don't forget to like this video, share, leave a comment. Let me know what you think about the whole video. Did you know that this place has existed in Nigeria? And um, Ikorobasi, a private state to be specific. Have you been to any of these places? Would you love to visit? Let me know in the comment section. And once again, don't forget to subscribe. From me to you, it's a wrap.